It's in the modern, stark, progressive-looking Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Netherlands that IDLO is today inaugurating its presence in The Hague, the international city of peace and justice, as it likes to style itself, and through the generosity of the Dutch government and of the government of the city of The Hague, we are here, and we're inaugurating this presence, how else, with a conference on the rule of law. Everyone is for the rule of law, but ask them what it means, and that's where the trouble starts. Fundamental rights requires two things. First, building trust amongst uh, ordinary people, and second, making sure that they have access to justice. This is a great occasion because IDLO was born in the Netherlands some 30 years ago as a small non-governmental organization. We are coming back as a well-respected, well-known uh, international intergovernmental organization to open an office that would help us to take advantage of the intellectual and diplomatic resources of this city. On behalf of the United States, I'd like to say that justice, human rights, and rule of law are centerpieces of my government's foreign policy and development priorities. Uh, so it's a great pleasure as the president of IDLO to be here to discuss how the rule of law can help further uh, the global agenda. As a judge, uh, there are very limited things you can do to make change, but I'll give you an example of one case I had where $2.3 million was left after a class action settlement. I was very interested in this issue of access to justice, so I found an NGO, gave them the money, they created a fellowship program, and now we've had more than a thousand lawyers do work in poor communities on a stipend, not what they would make in a law firm, and the corporations joined, other lawyers joined, and now we put about a hundred lawyers a year in the field. Prominent among years. participants was Iranian human rights lawyer and Nobel Peace Prize laureate Shirin Ebadi. Um, uh, 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 and the root of the problems of both LGTB and women is in one thing, that is a patriarchal culture. And sharing the stage was her fellow Nobel laureate and former president of Timor-Leste, José Ramos Horta. The rule of law can be a driver of change, but only if we work in partnership, and the partnerships we build must be broader and more inclusive. It's often said that there is more than one developing world, there are developing worlds, what experience of yours in Timor-Leste can you bring to bear on Guinea-Bissau, where you are working now? There are so many similarities. When we deal with, we are faced with uh, post-conflict countries, we are faced with uh, fragile states. If you look at the common denominators, there are so many, namely, in situations like in Ebisau, you can refer to Central African Republic or Somalia. The, literally, the non-existence of the state. The state doesn't exist as such, a state that we understand what it's supposed to be, to deliver safety, security, tranquility to the people, basic, basic services like clean water, school, education, health, uh, to the people, food security, and uh, justice for all. Justice that is fair, not justice of the strong against the poor, the underprivileged. We are convening some of the leading thinkers and practitioners, judges, lawyers, diplomats, policymakers, academics, and the idea really is what can we learn? What are the do's and don'ts of making the rule of law work for people and actually creating a culture of justice?